And since my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Well, you see, uh, this chapel in particular, another example of Illuminati design, it's like a pyramid at the top basically. Uh, there's no need for that at all, um, except obviously for decoration. There might be some idols there, maybe to illuminate their idols inside the building. Um, so this is a fairly new chapel. And we'll go and investigate another one. Children's hands are in my uh, This is another one. I taste him in the meals I make. I smell him in when I look around, I don't have to wonder where he'll be. I see him in you, and I hope you see him in me. Okay. So this is just a flyer for um, the Catholics, just to tell them that... Uh, Idols still aren't a part of God's covenant. I think God still doesn't like idols, especially in this house. People that say that they're going to God's house. Well, God doesn't like idols in that house because he gave Moses, he gave us the Bible, he gave us the second commandment, by which the, um, well, let's just say the scribes in this era have actually deleted the scribes didn't even do that in Yeshua's time. The scribes kept that second commandment in. But the scribes in this era have deleted this commandment. So let's now um, go and look at uh, one of our local uh, Roman Catholic churches and just see how Illuminati the design actually looks. Well, talk about being hidden in plain sight. Uh, there we see obviously a step pyramid design uh, for this Catholic church. And uh, it's very much that spirituality is not Christian. The spirituality is pagan, okay? Because you got step pyramids in Mexico where they did human sacrifices and so on. And you've got the pharaohs, pharaohs basically, who are obviously uh, had the pyramids built um, for their tombs and so on for different reasons. So uh, you can see, um, there's no, uh, there's no way that this uh, design is actually meant to be anything godly, but it's quite satanic. Okay, just after speaking to the person there, giving one of the flyers out, just explaining that even people have came out the main Roman Catholic churches and formed other Catholic denominations. So uh, because they've disagreed with certain. Um, commands or lack of commands um, in the Roman Catholic Church today. So let's see if we can speak to more people. Uh, I think I believe this chapel is coming out now. Basically what we have here on the left is what we have in the text, this Receptus in the King James Bible. And this is what we're having in the other texts translated by Jerome and the uh, second commandment. This is the second commandment which has fully been deleted from this set of commandments. Well, I would definitely say uh, that that went quite well. I uh, just gave a handful of them out there and uh, I've left a few so that my friends later can get maybe one or two um, flyers, but uh, basically it went, it went okay. And um, we'll just see how many of these flyers lasted past uh, this day if they take them home and read them, hopefully. Uh, if they're read in a... In a say in mind then they'll be they'll take the information on board and let's hope they do because uh, I guess it's the Lord's will for as many people to be saved as possible it's not God's will for people to be taken away from faith in Jesus Christ that's not the 
exercise here. The exercise is basically clarifying and um, confirming the God's commandments um, as we've actually uh, received them through uh, the King James Scriptures and uh, the King James Bible is actually read out in many Catholic churches abroad as well. So uh, we really got to establish these commandments in our lives. So thanks a lot for listening. Their message to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no good looks or majesty. When we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with disease. He was despised as one from whom men hid their face, and we didn't respect him. Surely he has borne our sickness and carried our suffering. Yet we considered him plagued, struck by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought our peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, yet when he was afflicted he didn't open his mouth. As a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shears is mute, so he didn't open his mouth. He was taken away by oppression and judgment. And as for his generation, who consider that he was cut out of the land of the living and stricken for the disobedience of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. He had pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has caused him to suffer. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light and be satisfied. My righteous servant will justify many by the knowledge of himself, and he will bear their iniquities.